To the left, we have the Samsung Q8FN. To the right, we have the Samsung Q90T. Now I knew these were gonna be pretty far apart as far as ability, but I had no idea it was actually going to be this far apart. It's pretty dramatic, folks, and I don't think you're ready for what you're about to see in this video, but hopefully it shows up on YouTube. It probably won't, but I'm gonna vocalize what I saw and what I'm seeing on my end. So it's like this, okay? The Samsung Q8FN is way, way better for literally every single color that counts. The hues are better, the, the colors are cleaner, the contrast is tighter. I mean, Samsung clearly didn't try with the Q90T and it shows in every single hue. It's just flat colors and, and, and gray black and, and it, bro, seeing it in person, I wish, I really wish I could bring you guys over on this end so you can see what I'm seeing because I'm blown away by the Q8FN. Honestly, really, this is a testament to what I've been saying for the longest time that, you know, these companies are just getting lazier and lazier. The Samsung Q8FN is literally the best picture I've ever seen in my life at this point. I mean, after, again, further adjustments, further calibration, because I wanted to make sure both of these TVs were fully calibrated. And I guess my Q8FN drifted a little bit um, as far as colors. And I'm going to tell you right now, after, again, just readjusting, recalibrating some things, Good God, man, it's not even a competition. It's, it really isn't. Because Samsung on the Q8FN side of things is more colorful, it's sharper, There there's more isolation, there's more contrast. I mean, I, I mean, I'm almost at a loss for words with how bad the Q90T actually truly is. And I have no idea if this is gonna show up on YouTube, but the level of vibrancy and, and black level detail that just like, this is like OLED level. And, and this is the difference. I wanna put this out there for everybody wondering. This is the difference between a TV that was made to fight OLED and a TV that was made to get shareholders to be appeased and happy. Because I'm telling you right now, the Samsung Q90T is so much worse as I'm looking at it with my naked eye and hues, skin tones, bro. I'm going to try to, I can't pause it there. Damn, dude, I'm trying to tell you guys, like, this is this is dramatic what I'm seeing here. Like, this scene, right, where we have this guy, Dr. Doc Ock, right? We have him just sitting here, the yellow bouncing off of his face. I mean, don't even look at the yellow on his face. I don't know if you can see it, but the yellow on the jets that, you know, Electrode has. I mean, the color green, like all these things are way better. And like the picture has a certain three dimensionality to it on the Samsung that the Q90T does not have at all at all, like at all. Now the Samsung Q90T is doing better this year with finding luminance in some parts of, of character. So like, as I look at the forehead and, and, and so like one little part of his forehead at the top, I can notice like I can see a little better isolation of that. A little tiny highlight on his, I don't even know what you call that forehead. I mean, whatever that hairline is right now, that that looks a little better, not a little better, just like it, I could see it a little better. So I don't know, man, but overall, like everything, the 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 octopus arms, the, the freaking lights, everything way better on the Q8FN. Like it's, bro, this is a slaughter. This is a merciless slaughter, the likes of which I've never seen. And you know, as the, the screens transition, it's gonna have gray on the screen. I don't know what percent gray that is, but that is gonna look really terrible. That's not black, it's not supposed to be black, so don't freak out or anything like that. That's just, I guess, how it is. But as I look at all these scenes, like I've been sitting here for, I don't know, I'd say an hour and a half, two hours now, um, between just looking at different types of content. Of course, I can't show you every type of content because copyright rules on YouTube, it'd be banned worldwide you know, and you'd never see it anyway. So, I mean, I had to do it this way as usual, but damn, when I tell you the black levels, even the reflections off of the goggles, next level, like next level tier on the Q8FN. And the, the Q90T by comparison is a flatter, muted, more washed out picture. 
And that is the only way I could really describe this to you that'll do you any kind of justice. Like the level of contrast and clarity behind these colors on the Q8F and the red right now, like my God, I really wish I could show you this. I wish it could come through on YouTube. Like this is insane what I'm seeing here. And again, it's not fanboying, right? I have a Samsung Q8F in and a Samsung Q90T, same room. I have no reason to lie about any of this stuff. And it, this is like proof that Samsung is not trying anymore. Now, of course, when you look at game mode, of course, that's another testament to them, again, just not trying anymore. And even as I look at like logos, as the logos are up on the screen, I'm noticing more blooming on the Q90T. The, Q the Q90T is like exhibiting like stronger blooming around objects, generally speaking, where Samsung's algorithm is much more aggressive. Now, this scene it, like, dude, after this calibration, this is the first time I'm seeing this, okay? The three-dimensionality that just kicked in. I don't know if you could pause it. it when it first came in, I'm blown away. I, like, I've, I haven't seen this before after my calibration that I recently just did on the Q8FN. Oh, my God, is all I can use to describe this right now. This is insane. Like, absolutely. Like, d what? There are two different people on the screen right now. Mary Jane, or what? Not Mary Jane. Uh, uh, what's her damn name? Aunt May. I'm. I'm like, bro. I'm flustered because I. This is a raw reaction. I wanted to do this in real time. Not ever seeing this before after a really solid calibration. I mean, three dimensionality, depth, clarity, isolation of contrasted elements, luminosity. I mean. Motion, all of this stuff is a win on the Samsung Q8FN, the Q90T coming in way, way behind. I mean, even as we now look at Mary Jane, the actual Mary Jane, not what I was saying a moment ago where I was messing up, I mean, all of this contrast is just kicking through to high gear on the Samsung Q8FN. Q90T is just not doing it like this, and it's unfortunate that the Q90T is basically a downgraded Q8FN. It really is because it's showing in scenes like this. Now, something positive about the Q90T, because it has weak local dimming zones, I guess, while I am seeing some blooming in the scene with the bright lights behind Osborne, I am seeing more shadow detail in Osborne's hair, wrinkles, things like that. Though the Q90T is showing more bright spotting around the light sources in the back where on the Q8FN, that stuff is literally non-existent. And these are the kind of differences that you're going to notice if you've had a Samsung Q8FN and going forward into a Q90T. Now, I know you can't see the blooming because of the way I have the camera positioned. That's just the only way I was able to really pull off this comparison. Again, I'm running with size limitations or, or a, a space limitations. So I'm not one of those ultra rich people that can, you know, put together some massive spread of whatever you're looking for. I don't really know, but even this, dude, even this right now, blowing my mind, like, oh my God, this is so freaking crazy. Like, look at the, oh my God, I have never, I'm sorry guys, I've really never seen this before and I'm geeking out right now because like, when you, okay, when you do YouTube like I do YouTube, right? Like you have all these AV YouTubers pop up, everybody jumps up and down every year and tells you they're so excited for the next latest and greatest because that's how the game works, right? But then you have guys like me that like actually love the science behind it, right? And I love seeing like back when, you know, Samsung came out 2018, fresh off of, this is a second gen QLED, fresh off of their QLEDs where they made the statement in 2018, we're going after LG OLED, we are going to beat them. Blooming, we're going to take care of that. We're going to take care of colors. We're going to take care of contrast. And they came out with monsters in 2018. That's why they're so good. They're not trying to do that anymore. They don't care about competing with OLED anymore. What do they care? They know people are afraid of burning. All they have to do is say burning free and then people will buy it anyway. So now you're seeing the downgrading quality, right? You notice the lack of color, the lack of hues, the lack of accuracy behind colors. I mean, I'm blown away by the Q8FN on a level I cannot describe right now as if I bought the TV all over again, falling all over again in love with this TV that I've had for years now. This is not supposed to happen when you have a Q90T, the, a, a level that's supposed to be above the Q8FN and it's getting demolished right now. And I'm just blown away that like very few people are actually taking the time to really explain the situation between these two brands right now. Not not these two brands, but these two models right now. And damn, like it's, it's huge, dude, the moon in the sky.
the moon and in the sky. Now, one thing to the credit of the Q90T that I have noticed, the Q90T has less banding than the Q8FN. The Q8FN definitely does have more banding than the Q90T. However, the color is second to none. I mean, I've never seen color on this level, you know, just so, oh my God, I, I would sound like the biggest Samsung fanboy just going on and on. I, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited at seeing competition. I'm excited at seeing like what they do each year. And Samsung really showed everybody their ass. They really, my God, it's so gorgeous. Are we seeing this people? Ugh, look at the detail. Oh, I'm so fucking excited for this Q8FN in a way that I really shouldn't be when I'm doing a comparison, but you need to see the side of things. You need to see what it's like when somebody takes a TV that they had for years, calibrate it up again, because I haven't done a calibration, to be fair, in a while, and in just seeing what that does, I'm blown away. I mean, you can pause this video at points where you think you need to. Maybe you might see a, a little something here and there. I'm seeing a lot of something, man. I'm seeing so much of something that I'm just kind of scratching my head as to how they could have ever have said the Samsung Q90T was ready for prime time. Because as I look at all these examples, scene after scene after scene, the Samsung Q8FN is dominating the Q90T in hues, color, brightness, luminosity, like everything you'd want in a TV, bro. This isn't cap, bro. This is like, I'm like, G shit, honest to God, bro, like, what has happened to TVs? What has happened? We didn't have a situation where it was this bad before. Now, a little thing that I am noticing here as I look at the two, as I try to balance out my commentary here, I need to bring the excitement level down, right? Because I'm way too excited. Uh, one of the things I could say about the Q90T is that it does have better shadow detail because it is indeed doing more for black levels in some areas than the Q9F or the Q8FN, so that's good. Um, I think like in scenes like this, yeah, there are some bright spotting, some hot points, the local dimming, not the strongest on the Q90T, but it, it's, it's trying, it's doing what it can with what it has, but I'm noticing that shadow detail is definitely better than the Q8FN. That's not to say that the Q8FN is black crushing, because it's absolutely not, so if it shows up that way on YouTube, there's not really much I can do about that. This scene just came in really impressively with Spider-Man, the little metal threads on him just glowing, like super, super glowing. And it looks really, really cool. Now, significantly more embers and glow to that fire on the Samsung Q8FN than we have on the Q9. Both are impressively bright right now. The dimensionality, though, is grabbing my eye on the Q8FN. And we're just going to keep playing these scene by scene. And, and you never know, maybe I might see something on the q uh, Q90T that's just like breathtaking. I don't know. Now I have some zebras on my camera here. I'm going to try to lower that down just to tweak so you guys can see maybe if it gets a little bit better. Uh, I'm telling you right now, man, the, the freaking Q8FN is showing the hell up like to this battle and it's not playing games. And I hope if Samsung's watching this, I hope they're embarrassed. I hope that they feel shame for what they did to what's supposed to be a luxury product that they're charging a premium price for in 20 20 because there's no reason my 2018 QLED should be spanking yours like this if you have the Q90T and it can't make you feel good hearing this kind of excitement for something that's older it can't make you happy but this is genuine this is real as it gets I've never seen these two go head to head this is the first time I just kind of grabbed my camera ran it first time around and I'm I'm blown away like literally the red now muted on uh, the Q90T this whole scene starting to wash out more now that we get to the brighter elements like right now as we get here, this just got really washed out. And, and I don't know if it's gonna show on YouTube, but I'm gonna tell you what I see. I see less color on the Q90T like you wouldn't believe. I see red far less impressive. I see every color really less impressive. Now it's just kind of blowing out on the camera, so I'm not really able to show off too much here. But I mean, I think maybe on YouTube you can pick up the color differences. If the Q8FN looks oversaturated, Trust me when I tell you, looking at it with my naked eye on my end of this camera here, it is not oversaturated in the slightest. It is blowing me away. Like, I am impressed again, like with the Q8FN, yet again, like another win for the Q8FN. Now, I mean, like, I'm sure I've probably turned off a lot of Q90T owners and they probably just say, ah, whatever, I'm happy with my Q90T. Listen, 
If you're happy with your Q90T, I'm proud of you. Be happy with it. Enjoy it. But there's definitely something going on here where every year consumers keep telling these manufacturers it's okay to have downgrades. It doesn't matter. I'm happy with my TV. And you're the reason why the Q90T is getting beaten so badly right now. I just need you to know that. Because had you been doing what I said and letting them know when there's something that needs to be fixed, this wouldn't be a thing. I mean, look at the differences if you can. I don't... I don't know if any anyone can see the differences on YouTube. I really I really don't know. I'll try to raise the brightness back up now that we're not in such a dark scene. The Q8FN, again, better color by far, by miles. The red on that freaking suit right now, Mary Jane's face more lifelike, reflecting the ambient light, the glow from the outside light that we're seeing. All of this stuff is just coming through in a more expressive way where the Q90T is more muted. Now again, my camera has a bit of a red push, so you're not gonna see accuracy, so you have to listen to the commentary for guidance. And also, you are not going to be seeing a 100% representation from this YouTube recording. There's just no way. That's why I always say I wish I could bring you over onto my end to see what I'm seeing. Because even as I see Miles Morales' face way better on the Q8FN, like this whole picture is three-dimensional. It's grabbing me in a way I never... I mean, I never get on the Q90T and I want this for the Q90T. Now to be specific here, I've gone out of my way. I've calibrated it up, dude. We're over here in Cal Night. I could try this with any other mode. Cal Day, as you see, looks worse. As you guys see, Filmmaker Mode, another variant where I did calibrate it. If you guys want me to try that variation out next to see if maybe that's a little bit more better for them. Not really. I mean, I, I liked movie mode before and now we're lacking in some hues. I don't know, man. It's just when you look at the picture to the left, it, it's just very apparent that this Samsung Q90T is just it's getting baked. It's getting baked and, and, and it's pretty bad. So we can try a different picture setting. And again, I've gone in and I've calibrated for not dynamic, but standard mode as well. For those who say maybe you should try standard. I mean, you pick a mode you want and the Samsung Q8FN is going to body it. I've done everything I could for the Q90T. There isn't a, a, a technique or a move I know outside of what I've already done for calibration to get it where it is. And while it might beat an LG OLED without the secret menu easily, it's not beating the Samsung Q8FN. That's that's a fact. It was just hitting different back in the day. And, you know, if two years ago was back in the day, then this is definitely showing exactly what a real TV is supposed to do, a proper TV from Samsung. And that's why I kind of get discouraged now seeing this level of just laziness out of Samsung now that we never used to have. I'm worried about their new mini LED TVs that are rumored to come out later next year because what does this say about their new TV attempts? Are they going to limit the capabilities? Are they gonna make it look worse on purpose? Like what's the aim here? I'll try to open up the ISO so you guys can see this scene a little bit better as they're fighting here. I mean, essentially, it's going to be the story that I've been saying all around. It's it's spectacular to see. I'm blown away. We could do this for an hour, honestly, and you guys would see every single step of the way what I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to try to switch games here so you guys don't think that I'm just like automatically picking something that will just favor the Q8FN. I don't know. People make weird excuses when they lose. I don't know why. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at Ghost of Tsushima. And again, this is all on capture footage from my PlayStation 4 Pro being fed through my Xbox One X. I've got all the color enhancement stuff ticked to try to give everybody the fair shake they need. And uh, it's running through an HDMI 2.1 cord. So, I mean, I don't think that obviously that makes a difference, but I'm telling you, it, it looks incredible. Now, right now, it's going to look a little green on the camera but in real life it doesn't look that green when we got to those flowers where they were looking more white and even the smoke now just looking a little bit more green in general again that's not how it actually looks it's just impressive as shit dude it really is and i have no real way of representing what i'm seeing with my own eyes but i will say that the q90t is looking a little blue a little cool by comparison so um i mean i guess that's just kind of what happens right um, I'm also noticing the letterbox bars are more gray, if you will. So I'll pause here and show you guys that if, if at all possible. Okay, I hope it shows. I'm going to open up the ISO here so you can see the Q8FN letterbox bars right there. They're really damn gray where the Q8FN is just like OLED black. It's inky. There's literally nothing at all like 
you see and even the bright spotting the hazing to the image of the Q90T it's just looking bad so again not ideal I'll put it back down to something a little bit normal where the zebras go away but I mean guys it is what it is I know a lot of people want their TV to win and I'll just tell you like this man each year they're gonna come out with a new TV and they're gonna try to claim that TVs are the best TVs are gonna change your life in all these ways that they don't so I'll ramp up the ISO again show you what we're looking at again Q90T has that haze that I'm talking about um, and if you if you really look at these side by side you can't see 100% accuracy but you can notice how the Q8FN is the clearer picture between the two that's the difference between these two displays the clarity out of the Q8FN is literally like three-dimensional where there's a a haze that makes the Q90T literally look like a budget TV like you know uh, a cheap tcl or something like that like it is not performing like a high-end display at all and i think that's something that i think needs to be talked about and at least recorded as we're going forward with these comparisons um again now that we're in a darker scene i'll try to keep the iso a little higher so we can see what's going on here but the the samsung is just hazing out man it's just not looking good now again the hues are going to be inaccurate that's why again i just kind of tell you you can't use these as 100 percent accurate uh you know representations but either way you look at it man th these tvs are both offering something very different from one another and i think if you're honest with yourself about what you're getting i think you'll see that you know these tvs have a long way to go they really do i want to see this scene i haven't seen this one before uh with nathan drake with his wife I think if you're honest about what you're getting out of these two displays, the Samsung Q8FN is obviously showing the more three-dimensional picture, the sharper picture, the more colorful picture, and Samsung needs to get it together because there's no excuse for this level of difference between their displays from literally just a two-year period. And this shows you how hard they've been slacking off, even in the refrigerator as I look. I'll pause it here. As I look in the refrigerator, I've got a lot of zebras on my cameras blowing out, so I'll just lower it down. I don't know if you guys can see at all. I have no idea what you can see, but essentially the geometry is way better on the Q8FN, and this is kind of like a reoccurring theme. I'm not going to lie, it's bothering me a little bit that the Samsung Q8FN is doing so much better than the Q90T because, you know, it's... A 9 series Samsung it's you know the Q90 series like it should be above the Q8FN and it's just not happening and that's really very disappointing because technology is actually getting worse so how does this fare as we get into you know 2021 I don't know but hopefully something changes because this is not it so I'll try to raise the brightness up a little bit so you guys can see it I'm trying to adjust it to look like it looks on my end very ultra ultra extremely difficult to do by the way I'm trying to do this here play by play um, the hues and the skin tone um, Nathan Drake and his wife looking way more realistic where they look dead on the Samsung Q90T so I'm gonna go into the settings here and I'm gonna try to change that actually because I mean there's got to be there's got to be a way I can get a little bit more out of that I'll put it back on movie mode where I have my calibration it's still a little green um, and it doesn't look as accurate as the Q8FN and as I look I mean I guess you know that's all I could really say about the Q90T is I guess it doesn't look as realistic though as I look at them both with my naked eye here so I really hope by giving this information out this extremely long comparison that you guys can see Samsung has gotten worse. They're definitely not doing as good as they used to do back in the day. It's a damn shame. I hope somebody highlights this and they get their act together because it could be so much better than this in 2020, but it isn't. So hopefully we don't have a repeat of this next year, but you never know. Thank you guys so, so much for watching the number one brand in honesty and watching this really long comparison. If you like stuff like this, subscribe. And until the next video, I will see you guys later.